Hey guys, it's Tim and Shauna from Punk Rope and today's video is answering the question Is jump rope bad for your knees? Fasten your seat belts, this one's going to take a while. The short answer is it depends as always. So Shauna's got her Go Green jump rope and uh, I can't even tell what shoes she's wearing but um, let me pan to see them. What are they? Brooks. Oh, they're Brooks. Neutral. Okay. Brooks neutral. Okay. We'll get to that later. Um, she is on a very forgiving surface and we're going to get to surface later too. It's kind of squishy. We're outside at the uh, Stytown Fitness Playground. Um, but we're going to go over six factors that impact how jump rope affects your knees, um, starting from the one that's probably most significant, and that is technique. Okay, so um, Shauna's going to jump for you, and this is her typical jumping style, and if you look at her feet, you're going to notice they barely leave the ground, and if you look at her knees, you're going to notice they're soft, but there's not a very deep bend there. Now she's well trained, so she's getting a lot of uh, propulsion from her calves. She's also got strong quads and hamstrings, and we're going to get into that too. So the keys here are not jumping too high. Now, if you jump high, sometimes there's a reason to jump high because you're trying to perform uh, multiple under could be double under, triple under, quadruple under, <laughs> but for Shauna, no. <laughs> but, but for the most part, if you're a beginner, and this video is really um, aimed at beginners, there is no reason to jump high if you're doing a single under. And understand that the higher you jump, then the more impact there will be on landing, right? What goes on must come down. So we want to keep those jumps nice and low. The second thing is, some folks have a tendency to kick the heels back. Um, some people will call this a donkey kick. Others will keel, call it a, a heel kick reflex. And there you see it with Shauna kicking back. So when you land from that kick back, it's a lot of impact and a lot of pressure on the knees. And if you do enough of it, it could cause some pain. Number three, um, we don't want to land in a squat. We want, we want to land with soft knees, but if we land with knees that are deeply bent, as Shauna's doing now, that's going to cause a lot of fatigue. It's not necessarily wrong, but if you keep doing that, and if you don't have good strength, um, that's going to also add to the irritation at the knees and possibly cause inflammation and possibly cause injury. Now the next one um, doesn't have to do with the knees exactly, it has to do with the arm position. So if you have good technique like Shauna with your elbows in nice and tight and your rope is sized appropriately, you can keep those jumps very low. But what happens if your technique's not very good and your elbows stray away from your ribs? Look what happens to her rope. Even if she doesn't jump and she stretches out those elbows, you can see effectively the rope becomes shorter. And what does that mean? It means she has to jump higher to clear the rope. And what did we say before about a high jump? More impact, right? Greater risk. So it's all about minimizing the risk and maximizing the reward. Um, and the last thing with technique is knee alignment. So when Shauna lands, we'll do this just standing here, we want her knee cap, that's the patella, right? There's, there it is, you can see her hand. We want that to pretty much line up with the second toe, or you could even say bi bisect the foot, right? What we don't want for that kneecap to cave in. Okay, she didn't even have to take her feet out wider, but just that, you see that motion there? The knees um, 
caving in, that is due to the fact that, now we're, we're just pretending here, that she doesn't have the strength to maintain good alignment. And a lot of that comes from the outside of the hip muscle called the gluteus medius. And from the intrinsic muscles of the foot and as well as the, the ankle and, and even the calves, right? All of it's contributing. So if you're jumping and you're in front of a mirror and you see those knees collapsing in, then we have a problem. Then we need to do some pre-training. Can't even. Can't even. Can't even. Too painful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we would have to we'd have to build some strength uh, to make sure we can jump safely. Okay. So technique number one. Now number two is volume. So if you're a beginner, you want to start slow and ramp up gradually, right? So if Shana was a complete beginner and she started jumping. Go ahead, Shauna's going to start jumping. She might set her watch or her phone to beep after 15, 20 seconds. Beep, 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 beep. And then she would recover for a period of time during which she might swing her rope or she might stretch or she might do some upper body activity or whatever she feels like doing. And then that watch her phone would beep again and she would jump again. But initially, she's not going to jump for more than probably a few minutes. It's enough. You want to gradually acclimate and adapt. And the worst thing you can do is do too much too soon. So don't worry, you got time. Slow it down. After a few weeks or so, you'll, you'll be fine. Um, the intervals are going to be short. Right? If it's long duration, you're going to fatigue and more than likely your form is going to fail. Um, however... Yeah, short can be like 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, can definitely be 15 seconds. Maybe a minute and then rest. Yeah. But we want to um, train frequently. So high frequency of practice, that means maybe multiple times a week, perhaps four times a week. Maybe initially you have a day of rest in between, but because we're going very low volume, the frequency of practice is not really an issue. It's the, it's the volume that's going to be the problem. And then if you do get into longer bouts of jumping, like if Shauna's jumping for three minutes, then you want to rest adequately in between those bouts. Okay? Awesome. Number three, strength. So we touched on that before. Shauna does a ton of work on her feet, her ankles, her quads, her hamstrings, her calves. Um, but she's been doing this for a very long time. So if you are new, <laughs> if you're new to, to rope jumping and you're not well trained, realize that you are putting yourself um, at some risk. And it's going to be important to improve your lower body strength as well as your core strength so that you can handle the demands of jumping. Um, so just to go over the musculature again, the outside of the hip, gluteus medius, that's a really important muscle not only in jumping but in running. And one of the great exercises, you see Shauna right now in a side plank. Uh, side plank is awesome and you want to take it to the next level. Look at that. Lift that top leg and that is the number one exercise as far as just body weight to improve the strength of that outer hip muscle. Number two is coming into a plank and lifting a leg and that's going to improve the strength of the support leg as well as the leg that's lifted. So lots of possibilities. Um, and core, we did mention core. So those planks are also outstanding for improving core strength. But everything works in concert. It's all one chain that starts from the feet and moves up to the ankles, to the calves, to the knees, to the hips, to the low back, mid back, upper back, into the neck and the head. So, um, yeah, please do not 
ignore your strength training. And if you need help, find a qualified trainer. And if you like Shauna, <laughs> and if you're injured, find uh, first go through your primary care to your orthopedist to your physical therapist. Okay. Okay. Next up, number four, surface. It's a big one. Okay, Shauna's on a soft surface. I don't know if you can tell, but when she lands, it's a little squishy. Let's see if we can see that. It's rubberized. Probably can't really see that. I can't even see that. So, yeah. So, you guys probably can't see that. But Shauna can feel it. Um, okay, so here's the deal, guys. You want a soft uh, surface that's not too... Yeah, yeah. She can kneel on it. Not too hard. So hard would be jumping on a diamond. All right, that's an exaggeration. Marble, concrete, not forgiving. Too soft would be jumping on a squishy mat, right? You've seen probably a lot of those um, exercise mats that just compress really easily, not so good. This surface or a rubberized track is typically pretty good. Uh, wood is pretty good. Suspended wood, really good. Sure, it's not over concrete. Yeah. Um, but you'll usually, your body will tell you. You may be able to jump on concrete or a cement floor if you get a decent mat to jump on. Fatigue mat might work. Yeah, so the Depends fatigue mats, those are usually about a quarter inch thick and they're pretty firm. Um, what you don't want is a really squishy mat. It's not going to help you at all. Next thing to look for in surface is that it's level, right? You don't want there to be divots. This is um, not that great for level. Yeah, this isn't. This is not. This is not perfect. And also level meaning that it's not in an incline or a decline because that can uh, affect what's happening at your knees. Um, just think about going upstairs versus downstairs, and. Um, that's usually a good example. Most people have more difficulty going downstairs. So also no obstructions, right? No branches, no rocks, no dogs, no cats, that sort of thing. Okay? Sometimes you end up in a gym with like segmented absorb. It's very annoying where there's big cracks in between. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see those. Don't um, try to jump in that kind of space as a beginner. <laughs> exactly. Like that, no that, cracks. that sort of gym, um, call square. it matting, padding those squares, and then they have gaps. That's, catch your rope. yeah, yeah. <laughs> catch your toes, your rope. Not so good. Um, number five is going to be footwear. And we're not going to get into a dissertation on footwear. Sean's got her Brooks on. But suffice it to say that. If you go more minimal, so that's less cushioning, um, that will improve your proprioception. And if you're well trained and you're strong, then um, you're setting yourself up pretty well. Shouldn't have a problem. But if you're not well trained and you're not that strong and you're going minimal, then you might be asking for trouble at the knees. <laughs> Sana knows. Um, Elevated heels are going to pitch you forward, so the traditional running shoes that are often um, elevated by, say, 10 mil, they call it a drop, it's often a 10 millimeter drop, 8 millimeter drop, that's pretty high, that, that puts you forward and that can have some impact on the knees. Um, we often opt for a lower drop. You should come in and show your shoes. <laughs> so my shoes... I don't know that you're going to be able to see this. I'll come in. <laughs> I had Tim come in to show his shoes because they're a little more so flat than small. mine are. But that's a, a minimal that somebody might get away with who still needs some cushioning on a surface like this. <laughs> Those were a four millimeter drop. Um, I'm not sure what these are. It may be slightly and the, more elevated than it's really good. For yeah. And that brand was Innovate. I-N-O-V, the number eight, in case you're curious. Um, but mainly the, f the footwear should fit, right? It's, it's got to fit your foot, both in terms of the length 
Uh, you want to buy your shoes late in the day if you're not getting them online or if you are getting them online try them late in the day when your foot is at its largest and you want the midfoot to be snug and you want the heel to be snug. Now do all these factors uh, relate specifically to the knee? Not necessarily, but it all it all adds up. Eventually it will. <laughs> yes, eventually it will. Okay. So, and then and then cushioning, yeah. So if it's if it's a lot of cushioning, you will sacrifice proprioception, meaning you won't really feel um, your feet when you land. There'll be a little lag. It's a little less fun. But um, but th there may be reasons to have a decent amount of cushioning depending on your orthopedic status. And then finally, last but not least, your rope, right? Uh, believe it or not, the rope you choose can have an effect on your knees. Now the reason for that is Shauna's using a five millimeter uh, PVC plastic rope that is appropriately sized. It's the right length for her. So that means as she's jumping, she's able to keep those jumps very low. And of course she has good form, so they're, the landings are very soft. But if she had an inappropriately sized rope, specifically too small, then she is going to have to jump higher, right, uh, to clear that rope. There's just, there's no other way around it or she's going to miss. But more than likely she's going to jump higher and that extra height is going to increase the impact which is going to affect her knees. So not so good. Um, and then we're going to leave you with one last thought about ropes which is uh, heavy ropes have become popular these days and there are good reasons to use them and they do have benefit. However, if you end up picking up, let's say, a two pound rope, the one Sean is holding is one pound, but you're like, you know what, I want to be badass, I'm going to go for the two pounder. Here's what can happen. It could be so heavy that it slows down your turning. So Sean is going to jump with it. And also interrupts your rhythm because you're not used to it. So you're not so consistent with your speed. And then because it's slowing you down, it could force you to jump higher, to squat deeper, deeper so that you can get back up. Um, so we'd say at first, especially if you're a beginner, start with a rope that's a reasonable weight. So anywhere from that four to eight ounce range is good. Okay guys, so again, six factors to consider, technique, volume, strength, surface, footwear, and the rope you choose. They all have an effect on how you do, or how your knees do with rope jumping. Um, so back to the question, is jump roping bad for your knees? It still depends, but <laughs> generally, no. Generally, it can be a very good thing and just very quickly, when I had knee surgery, the first thing I did in my rehab, almost the first thing, was to jump rope to get healthy again. So, sorry that was a long one, but hopefully it was helpful. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, jot them down in the comments below and we will answer them as quickly as we can. Subscribe to our channel. And guys, we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching.